going to be making some art in the kitchen, which is very exciting. So we're going to be doing this thing called a gelatin monotype. Um, the great thing about this is that I actually usually do this with my students on campus and cook the thing up at home and then have to haul it to campus. So actually doing this straight from home is a lot easier than having to do it in the classroom. So to start with this process, I've gathered a few elements. One is a large pan. I purchased these ones from the grocery store or Target or something that are disposable so I can use it and toss it and not have to worry about a huge mess to clean up. A spoon for stirring. Um, a large measuring cup here and Knox unflavored gelatin. You can usually get this at the store or you can order it online. This is a box of 32 envelopes. You use quite a number of envelopes depending on how large a print you're going to be making. And then a pan to heat up your water. And that's pretty much everything that we need to start. First off in this process, you want to decide exactly how many cups of gelatin that you want to make for the surface that you're working with. You know, if I had something smaller, I might do less, but this pan is quite large, so I'm going to do a 12 cup recipe. So you need six cups of cold water to start. So I've put two in first, and now here I have my other quart container. I'm going to add in four more cups of water. And the recipe calls for two cups two packets of this Knox gelatin per one cup of, of water. So I did order this box of 32 envelopes, which is really handy. So I have envelopes sitting out here. And what I'm gonna do first is to take these envelopes and open one up. And you really just wanna sprinkle the gelatin across that surface. So you'll do this with every single one of those packets. So since I have 24 of these, it does take a bit of time. And so I'll speed this up a little bit for you so you can see how this goes. And what you have to do is um, let them sit on that surface until they start to get uh, kind of gelatinized for a while. And I'll show you that in a moment. If you are doing this process on your own, remember that you can mix up a pan of gelatin at whatever size you wish. The recipe simply calls for 50% of cold water and 50% of hot water, and the number of gelatin envelopes that you need are two envelopes per total number of cups of water, both hot and cold together, that you are using. So you can see that that's quite a bit of gelatin that I put in there, and what I'm going to do is to just as you saw, I sprinkle the gelatin over the water in the pan and I'm letting it swell until it looks a bit like applesauce. You can see that already starting to happen here. The, the water is sort of soaking into it. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is then um, gather six more cups of water, put it in my pan and set it to get hot and boil. Okay, it looks like my water is really starting to boil now. Um, so the next thing you're going to do is remove the water from the stove and pour it into your large dish and then stir up your gelatin until it dissolves fully. And pour carefully and you can see it you know, already immediately dissolving. So it's a good idea to do this process, I don't know, sometime before you fill your refrigerator with groceries because this is a large pan as you can see and I gotta fit it in the refrigerator to get the gelatin to harden before I can do anything with it. So I'm going to um, very carefully stir the gelatin until it's all dissolved. So I've got this pretty well mixed up. You can see though there's some bubbles on that surface. So to remove those bubbles, which we don't want to have show up in our print that we're gonna make, you can take a piece of like a newsprint or simple paper. I'm gonna use <clears throat> a paper towel and you can drag it across that surface lightly and it will help to um, just remove those bubbles from that surface there. You can see that. So once we have this completed, 
it's pretty, it doesn't take very long, is that <clears throat> we want to let the gelatin actually sit on the countertop for a little bit so that it hardens slightly. Because as you can see, this is a pretty large pan and um, it's, it's quite complicated to try to get this over to the refrigerator, which is where we need it to be in the end. So as I was saying, it's a good idea to uh, do this process when you don't have too many groceries in the refrigerator so that you can fit your printmaking service in so that it will be able to harden later. Plan ahead when you decide to do this process or maybe use a little bit of a smaller surface, up to you. I'm gonna let this sit, put it in the fridge, and we'll be ready to do some printmaking. And there it is, chilling out in the fridge for a bit. Hey, so my gelatin is pretty much ready to go. It's in the fridge still, but I'm just preparing a few other items that I need to produce my monotypes. What I have here is a sheet of rice paper. There's actually two sheets that I tore in half already. I'm going to first, you know, kind of tear those down to a little bit smaller scale so I can handle them, you know, on the gelatin more easily. So what I do to get paper ready is I don't cut it with scissors, I actually tear it along the edge of the ruler there. So it creates kind of a nice rough looking deckled edge like you would see with a, a natural paper. So I'll go through and do that. And then the other things that I have here are different elements that I want to use for my printing. I have my block, black block printing ink. You can essentially do this in color as well. I'm just going to show you a basic process with black. Masking tape, just a piece of clear mylar so I can use it as a little palette, and my brayer. So I'm going to be taping this down, and then the other items that I have are things that I'm going to use to make my prints. So to do a gelatin monotype, um, your elements need to be soft. So here's a bit of an overview of some things that I've gathered that might be really kind of cool to do a gelatin monotype of. This process is really nice because it almost creates like a photographic looking print of an element that you press into gelatin. Um, the one thing you do have to consider is that it's a soft surface. So the material that you use is best to be something that's also soft or flexible. If you do want to do something that's like metal or something that's a little bit more complicated in terms of making a print, you might want to like decide that you're going to save that for the end for when you can potentially destroy the, the gelatin that you're using and throw that away after that final print. So I think that's pretty much a good overview of everything that you might want to consider that you need and let's get started. So here you have a nice overview of my work area. My jello is ready to go. Looks like a one or two bubbles by accident, but that's okay. Well, I can work around those. Get my block printing ink out and my brayer. I've also got my torn up sheets of rice paper. So I'm just gonna roll out some ink. And how this works is that um, you basically do two prints per each object. The first one is a negative and the other one is a positive. So I have my paper size about the size. I'm gonna roll up the jello itself, which is kind of interesting. Also, the first thing you might want to check is just to make sure that that surface of the jello is nice and dry. So I'm just gonna blot it with paper towel a little bit. Actually it looks pretty good. You can also, you know, do this without it in the pan. Um, just you just have to make sure that your jello is thick enough so that you're able to take it out. I, I tend to want to leave it in there just because I want to make sure it's not going to tear, it stays stable for me. You can see how I'm going to roll up the jello with ink. So your first couple rolls aren't going to be super dark. Um, it takes a little time for the ink to build up on that surface. And you also want to, again, make sure that it's, it's decently dry. If it's too, too wet, then the ink just simply doesn't want to accept that surface. So I've got it rolled up here. And so let's see if we can try one. My objects are over here. I think I'll try something, you know, kind of minor at first. Maybe just like a piece of felt and a piece of Kleenex here. I'll lay them down 
onto that area where I rolled up the ink. And then essentially you just put your paper down on top. You know, if you decide you want to kind of make a composition with it, you can certainly do that. And we'll see what happens. So you lay your paper down carefully on top. <clears throat> Sometimes rice paper has a sort of like a, a more fibrous side and a smoother side. So you want to put that fibrous uh, textured side down. You press it down a little bit with your hand. And then ideally I would have a baron to push this, but I can use, again, my bone folder and just rub in that surface. I mean, you know, this is jello, basically like finger jello, which you may have had when you were young. And it's kind of rubbery feeling, I suppose, but you certainly want to make sure that you're not going to accidentally tear into the jello itself. So I press down for a little while, then I grab the corner and lift up. And so you have a negative print first, like that. Then what you do is to take the objects off of that jello very carefully. You might want to use um, you know, a paintbrush or X-Acto blade, anything that will help you like pick it up carefully without ruining it, because that's where you get the beauty in this process. I'll pull those pieces of felt up, and you can see already that there's some texture happening in that area. So then I want to take another sheet of rice paper and just put it straight down and make a second print. So this will be more my positive print where I can see those objects e more easily and they'll end up looking actually quite lifelike, quite photographic, which is something I really enjoy. So press for a little while. You can also test the corner, see if you need to press some more. But this looks pretty good. I'll lift it up and you can see how that looks. So this first one's a bit pale, so we'll keep on working with uh, this surface and try it again. So grab my ink, again roll it up over that surface. I could also ink up this whole thing and maybe do more than one at a time. Maybe I'll try that. So it's fun to see what kind of effects you get with different types of objects with this process. And it's honestly so easy to do at home. So in there it's getting a little bit darker for me now, so that might be a better print. Maybe I'll try a little bit of this stuff, see how it comes across. And then... This is like a little bit of a textured fabric. Maybe I'll try that. And then maybe some sandpaper or... So you just have to think about how much paper that you have for printing. Because you essentially make two prints per objects. Or if you're doing more than one object on one print, that works too. So I'll put this one down here. Press it a little bit there. And then I'll put this other one here, and then I can get two at a time, or if I planned it, I could have just made a larger composition if I like. Um, I kind of like the smaller scale, it's a little bit more intimate size, and then later I can do some different things with these where I can perhaps collage or attach them on to different things or turn them into a book. So this one's a little bit bumpier, so I just want to check to make sure I'm getting that in there. Maybe I want to use my fingers a little bit. Okay, lift this one up. That's the negative. And this one, it's kind of a nice shape actually and then carefully lift those elements off. Ooh, I think this one's gonna be really pretty. You, you can get such beautiful, delicate detail, particularly with these elements that are from nature. Oh ha, I put the sandpaper the wrong way. Oh well. 
<laughs> that happens. No big deal. Okay. So I'll put another one down here on this surface. And here. I think the other one's not going to be so exciting, so I'll try to get get you to see this one here. I think it'll be really nice. So press. And lift. Look at that. That's really beautiful. See how photographic that detail looks? It picks up such uh, nice little delicacies in those natural forms. And then here's the other one where I kind of made a mistake. So I think that one was going to be a failure anyway. So let's try, you know, a few more and see how they turn out. Also, you may wish to take the gelatin out of a pan that you don't want to get ink into. If you plan on doing this, just make sure that the gelatin thickness is between 3 fourths and 1 inch. Unmolding the plate allows you to use a larger paper size than the size of the gelatin itself. This is a quick and easy way to make a print. You just need to plan ahead since the gelatin needs several hours to become solid. So I really love how beautiful these end up looking. Um, even like just looking at the image like in that gelatin, it's quite detailed and delicate and very beautiful. So you can really have a good lot of fun doing this process. So I've done some different items and you see how the ink is accepting uh, the jello surface a bit more readily now that I've done several of them. So um, my results are a blacker kind of bit of value. <clears throat> and so I could do a whole series of these, like elements of nature or other kinds of items that I might want to make prints of and incorporate them into my work. Ooh, that one's nice. So you can see there. Quite beautiful, I think. Let's try the other one. And this, the great thing is that you don't need a printmaking press or anything like super fancy to do this process. That one's quite nice too. Well, now I'm pretty well done. So what you can do is just dump the jello. Maybe you can save the container so that you can do the process again another time. You know, just clean up your ink. Um, if it's a water-based ink, which is best, just use soap and water and then you can take a look at what your prints turned out to be and admire them. Here's a final look at the prints that I made. The first two prints were quite light and then as I proceeded I got more blackness to come out and create more detail. In the end they turned out quite beautifully. Hey there everyone! Thank you so much for joining me on this really fun demo on gelatin monotypes. I hope that you know, you'll try this out with some really fantastic results. Remember that um, you can do lots of things with these. Uh, they can be a work of art in themselves, but you can also perhaps consider transforming them into something like in a book. I have my students make them into accordion books sometimes. And they can also be used for collage materials and for um, something like a chine collet, which is kind of a fancy term for uh, printmaking slash collage, I suppose. I hope that you'll join me again for my next demonstration. It'll be sure to be experimental and interesting for you to learn something new. Thanks.